Hi, my name is Arafina Napoleon and welcome to my first YouTube channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really excited about this one. You know why? Because I'll be sharing my story with you of how I secured master's funding with my HND. <laughs> Sounds strange, right? Yeah, I, I trust me, I know that feeling because months ago I was also on this table like trying to know if it's possible and I am a witness. I'm here to tell you that it is actually possible. So on today's episode, the first episode yeah, of studying in America, I will be telling you how I got mine. I'll be sh basically sharing my story with you, um, all those that have got HND who are on this table. Please, please, and please make sure you click the subscribe button and share this video as well. So, if you know you're interested in knowing how to secure funding with your HND for a master's program, you need to stick around because I'll be right back. So how did I go about it? Now, let me share the story with you. It all started like sometime last year. Um, I, I wanted to study abroad, but I had reservations because I don't have $30,000. Yeah, I'm gonna get $30,000 to pay for my tuition. You know how crazy it is. Let me tell you, studying abroad is very, very expensive. Yeah, no, there's no need trying to sugarcoat, but that's the truth. So, I said, okay, what do I do? First off, I had the obstacle of an undergrad. My undergraduate degree was HND, which was why I did not really tilt towards the UK. I made inquiries and I found out that there were schools that was offering that would accept my HND for a master's. Now, I had two challenges. One was getting a school that would accept my HND for a master's. The other one was securing funding so i had battles to fight on two fronts and <laughs> trust me it was not an easy one so what did i do at first the first thing i did was to make up my mind and making up my mind was not easy because i wanted to have the masters in nigeria but i went to i was working so i couldn't do like a regular kind of study pattern i went to national open university and i was told that i would have to do like a postgraduate diploma first of all before going for a master's and trust me i did consider it because i really needed a master's i felt like i could not get to the u.s with an hnd so i wanted to do like a top-up program so when i'm applying to schools in the u.s it puts me in a better position to get the admission and whatever funding i was pushing for at the point at the time so i went to national open university they told me everything i did actually apply for a postgraduate diploma at national open university <laughs> yeah yeah trust me that was i spent money like i had to do a lot of things i applied because i wanted to have that stop gap before going in for a master's program i applied and I think one day I was just on my bed and something just said, why not try and see if you could research and see if you would get schools that would accept HND for a master's program. And I was like, okay. So this was what I did. I carried out a Google search, keywords, schools in America that accepts HND for a master's program. Those were the keywords I used in my Google search. And I saw um, some few articles, yeah, some write-up, but it was really nothing to, it was really nothing concrete. And I was frustrated because I had to do search upon search upon search. And it was kind of complicated. And at that point I was like, no, I have to do more. So what did I do? From those schools I saw online, my the limited uh, results I got, I had to narrow down. One of them was um, um, University of West Virginia. Yeah, University of West Virginia. Is it West Virginia University? The US has so many confusing names. Um, uh, University of West Virginia. The other one was um, um, University of Minnesota. The other one, I think one other university, I'm trying to record the name. So I had like some lists that I saw online. So when I saw those lists online, what was the next thing I, I did? I had to start emailing them. Now, you have to send email to avoid you wasting application fee because 
US is not like UK. US, you have to pay for application fee. So I understood that I can't apply to so many schools paying application fees and without really even knowing what to do. So what did I do? I had to, I sent email. I sent email to different kind of emails, by the way, to the international programs, uh, international admissions, yeah, international admissions. And I also sent to the program coordinator of the faculty that has got the course I wanted to study. Yeah. Trust me, they do respond to email. They do. It's not like where we're from that email, reading email is a, is a problem for us. They do respond to email. So I reached out to the University of Minnesota. I reached out to West Virginia, Univers West Virginia University. Yeah, correctly. West Virginia University. I reached out to which other school? I reached out to Kent State University. Yeah. I reached out to like, I think University of Texas and yeah, I'm trying to record a couple of universities basically. Now, so when I reached out to them, this was my question. So when you're sending, an, sending out email of inquiries, you have to craft your email in a way that you're going straight to the point. There's no need because sometimes people get tired of really lengthy email, you know, you just want to see what's, what are you talking about? So I sent out an email. Now, this was what I included in the email. Hi, yada, 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 yada. Um, my name is this, that, that. I'm a sports journalist, I'm a broadcaster, and I want to study, I want to apply, I'm applying, I want to apply for a master's program in sport administration, sport management, depending on what they call the course of the school. Um, I want to study sport administration uh, at master's level and i am writing to make an inquiries to know if the school accepts hnd for a master's program mind you nothing stopped me from applying outrightly you understand but because i wanted because i had limited resources of application money for application i needed to be strategic key i needed to be strategic so i did not just start applying applying i needed to be sure before putting in that application because some schools application fees as high as $90 some $75 some $50 some $60 so you know how much that is when you convert to the naira and the rest and i understand that it's not easy anyway even myself you know easy for me so i sent out the email i was like i want to study sports management and i want to know if the university accepts hnd for a master's program um, where I am from, an HND is equivalent to a bachelor's degree, degree but I needed, to, I want to be sure my HND is a two-year course upon the completion of an initial OND, um, OND program, making it four years. I had a total of yeah, I had a semester number of semesters I had. I stated it in the email, and I look forward to your response so I could move on with my application. I sent that email to. West Virginia, yeah, West Virginia University. I got a response and I was told that, I sent it to the um, graduate admissions. I got a response from them telling me that, yes, that they can accept my HND for a master's program. But it's not up to them to make the decision that the decision comes from the department. So I had to send another email to the graduate coordinator, yeah, of the, the faculty that has my program, just to be sure, because the U.S. operates a kind of the, their admission process is not centralized. You get so sometimes admission decision comes from the faculty that has the course you're offering or the college that has the course you're offering. So they they, they make the decision and communicate the decision to the graduate admissions or international admissions, depending on what they call it. So different schools have different admission process. So when I sent the email to, I sent the email to the program coordinator of the sport management, uh, the, the faculty that has a sport management course, and he responded and he said that uh, I should attach my CV. No, I attached my CV to the initial email. And he was like, yes, they do accept, they do accept HND for a master's program. I could go ahead with my um, application process and they would make their decision if they feel like I am a good fit for the program. That was one thing I did. 
at um, West Virginia University. Then I went over to University of Minnesota. I sent the email. To, I sent the email to the international admissions, um, the the department in charge of uh, admissions for international students, and they referred me to the program. They said I should contact the coordinator of the program to be sure that sometimes I might not uh, meet the standard of the international office, but I can meet the standard of the uh, program. Um, um, department. So the program department has, um, has the final say, final say rather, on whether they would give me the admission or not. That it is not up to them. That they go with whatever the program department um, says. I sent the email and um, it was like I, the response I got was like um, they don't accept HND, but because um, I looking at my experience because every of the email I sent, I ensured. I attached my CV. Yeah, I attached my CV. And they were like, looking at my CV, I have enough experience in the sports uh, industry, so they feel like I'm a good fit. Mind you, they were not accepting HND initially, but when they looked at my CV, they felt like, yeah, this is an experience we could use in this program. So that was another thing that stood out for me. So they said, yeah, that I should go ahead with the application. Now, so I already had like a number of schools that I knew that I could apply to. This is where it gets interesting, guys. Now, some of these schools required uh, international English language test scores. Some required GRE. Now, <laughs> I was like, I don't have money to apply for, to go and do the test. For both tests, I was, let me be honest with you, I wasn't ready to do those tests. Not like I would fail, but because I just felt like I could get something with my experience. So I wrote back to the different schools, asking them if they can waive the I, um, in, in, uh, International English Language Test Scores requirement for me and the GRE, which were important. So West Virginia University responded that looking at my years of experience that going by the requirements if you have three years experience in the particular field they can waive gre for you so they said you can apply the gre will be waived for you automatically because of your um, years of experience now the question of what about the in, um, english language test uh, i got lucky um, as at the time of application, they already updated the English language uh, test list, meaning Nigeria was now among the um, English-speaking countries. Because for some schools, Nigeria they include Nigeria. For some, for some other schools, they don't include Nigeria. When I did the first inquiries, they included, they did not include Nigeria. But at the point of application, they included, they've updated the list. I think they updated every every time, something like that. They updated the list and Nigeria was now among. So in um, West Virginia University was now ticked all the boxes for me. I made up my mind that I'm going to apply to that school. For University of Minnesota, I was, they said they are not going to waive the English language test scores, but the program does not require GRE. So I needed to write the English language um, test scores. Um, uh, yeah, the English language test um, so basically and the application fee was i think was it 75 or 95 dollars you see that 75 or 95 dollars that of west virginia was 60 dollars and i was like okay what do i do what do i do what do i do i took out minnesota from the list then i apply contacted western illinois university and I was told that they accept HND. I could go ahead. Nigeria was also among the English speaking um, English speaking countries. So everything was just perfect. That one, the application fee was thirty dollars. So I applied to you know, uh, Western Illinois University. I applied to West Virginia University. Those were the two um, schools I applied to initially with my HND. So Western Illinois University did not did not give me admission. 
But before I applied, I went through um, the funding process. So one thing that was in common, in uh, one thing, in, one thing all the schools I applied to had in common was that on the website they stated that there is graduate assistantship for the almost all the students. I think for Western Indiana University, 82% um, of the students have graduate assistantship. Yeah, which was the funding. So I was like, okay, there's funding here. I would go there because I, I wanted to go where the funding was. So I applied to Western Illinois University, I applied to West Virginia University sometime last year. And Western Illinois University did not give me the admission. I think they, they said they sent me an email that will make a decision next, next summer, next term. West Virginia University gave me admission. Yeah, but there was no funding. So what did I do? I sent an email to the program coordinator. I went through the website, the program's website, and I found out that for students that don't have graduate assistantship, that they do waive credit units for the students. Now, each semester, I think it's nine credit units, yeah. So I wrote to them asking for them to waive um, credit unit for me because I don't I can't pay out of my pocket for my nine credits they responded I think I still have the letter in my amongst my documents so they responded that they wa they've waived six credit unit for me now waiving six credit unit for me at the end of the day was not really really favorable because I knew that I needed extra money because that means I would have to, I would have to pay for three credit units and also pay for the other fees that I'm supposed to pay for registration fee, orientation fee, and the rest. And that orientation fee and every other expenses was running to like three thousand dollars. And the the cost, the remaining three credit units I'm supposed to pay for, was also running into like six thousand dollars. Meaning in a semester I'm looking at like give or take eight thousand dollars. And trust me. I don't have that kind of money. I will not come and lie to you anything. I wasn't having that kind of money. So I, I, they said I should respond if I'm taking the offer or not, but I did not respond immediately. I was still trying to explore other ways and see. In, in fact, it got to a point I was like, it's like I will not move again to the US for my master's this year. That is likely to be next year. I'll have to make more better plans and the rest. And I was also running my postgraduate diploma at National Pro University while I was pursuing this other one. Then I applied to my current school, Bowling Green State University. Now, before I applied, I also sent an email to the graduate admission and the program coordinator, yeah, of the faculty that has my program graduate admissions act, um, told me to contact the program but they do, said they would do accept hnd for a master's but i would have to contact the program coordinator so i sent the program coordinator an email stating the reason for the email and the rest and she said yes that they do accept hnd for a master's and i sent another email asking i was specific asking if they give funding yeah because i already had an admission from another school i was just looking for something that would give me a better offer compared to the one of west virginia university so i asked if they had funding for graduate international students and she responded that um they normally have funding for for students um but that will be after i'm able to get the admission and i was like great perfect application fee was $75. Then there was GRE conversation. There was conversation of uh, requirement and there was also requirement of um, sample writing. When I submitted for West Virginia, I did not submit well, sample writing. So I had to put together a sample writing for my current school. How did I do, go about the sample writing? I got my, under, my HND, my HND project, which I did converted to PDF and that was what I submitted at the sample of writing and for the English language uh, requirements 
Nigeria luckily was among the English speaking um, countries. So if you are a Nigerian, you are not expected to submit English language test. So I was like, perfect. I'm not writing English language test um, exam. Good. Now, it was not a case of GRE. Luckily for me, as at the time of the application, this, my school was, they were currently waiving the GRE requirement for all programs. Yeah, they were waiving it for all programs. And I'm like, whew, this is sweet. I'm not spending money anymore. So I quickly grabbed it and I submitted my application. The application fee was around $75. Submitted my application. Even though I wrote to require for application fee waiver, they, they didn't grant me. They said, I'll have to pay for the, uh, pay the application fee. Okay. I submitted the application fee, uh, the, um, the application in November, I think November or December. Then I waited January, I didn't get anything, February. And I was like, are you sure I would not switch over to West Virginia University? Because uh, honestly, I don't know. I was like, really, really, I was all over the place. It was a struggle for me. It was a really, really tough struggle. So in March, I had to email the program coordinator making inquiries on the status of my application. And I got an email from her saying, congratulations, the faculty, they've gone through your application and they believe you'll be a good fit for the program. You've been offered admission to study sport administration, yada, 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 yada. I'm like, whoo, I was so excited. I was, trust me, I was so, you needed to see how, how excited I was like, I'm like, okay. After celebrating the admission letter decision, that was when the conversation of funding now dawned on me. I was like, wait, 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 wait. I need to ask if I'm going to get funding. I need to ask. Immediately, what did I do? I sent uh, another email. I'm like, um, I want to know about how to go. I, I want to know how, how to go about securing funding because I can't. I was, I was, I was like, open in my email i was like i'm happy about this decision but i can't afford to pay out of my pocket because i don't have the financial capabilities at this point so i really need funding and she said in a couple of weeks that the funding decisions will be communicated to students who will be getting a graduate assistantship from the department I should look out for if, if I'm selected that I will also get the email. She sent me documents to fill out, submitted everything, and I started praying. I had to put chaplets inside water. You know what that means in Nigeria? I started praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm like, God, I need this funding. I can't stay in Nigeria again because my spirit, everything was, I was already seeing myself in the US. Because how do you explain that I got admission into two schools and I couldn't pull it off at the end of the day? So I was, heaven knows if I had stayed back, if I didn't get that funding, I might have gotten into depression. I'm being honest with you right now. I was praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Boom! What happened? So one night I was just like, okay, let me just check my school email. And I saw the email. I got the email. And they're like, Congratulations, you've been offered funding. The funding covers for your full tuition, which is like nine, which is the nine credit out of state tuition and international tuition both together. And you'll be receiving a particular amount of stipend uh, monthly for so and so period. So ah. so when I when I saw that thing, the first thing I did was I checked the the tuition scholarship again. And I knew that, okay, my nine credit was totally covered as against West Virginia that only with six credit for me. So nine credit was covered for me, so which reduces my deficit. So the only money I know I'll have to pay would be like registration fee, orientation fee, just like that. Because normally, even if you are on a scholarship like funding, like graduate assistantship, there are still other money you pay. Your graduate assistantship does not cover for like things like orientation fee, your medic some, some schools cover for medical insurance but mine did not cover for medical insurance i had to pay for my medical insurance myself 
so give or take everything this first semester my deficit was around two thousand two hundred yeah two thousand two hundred dollars that's what i paid this semester uh if i didn't get the funding the graduate assistantship i would not i would be paying almost like ten thousand dollars so i have like a full tuition scholarship and i was so happy like really happy i was like yeah now i cannot push for my visa and the rest and the rest now this is what i want to address in this video i have shared my story with you now this is what i will say things that stood out for me was one my years of experience i'm a sports journalist so i've been in the sports industry for like seven to eight i think this should be like my eighth year or something like that if i'm mistaken so i already had the experience of sports i had years of experience so that was also another thing that stood out for me so my years of experience covered for some things like if if like in the um west virginia university it was able to waive my gre for me and the rest so the first thing i needed to do as someone that has got hnd and wants to study abroad i need you to know that you can actually get funding yeah in the u.s they get they call it graduate assistantship it's not that's what they call it that's the funding in the u.s for most for um for mostly graduate studies and i also know a couple of people in the u.s that went outrightly for from hnd to phd they're currently doing their PhD in the u.s with hnd and they have funding like like in the in the u.s let me tell you this they are funding the funding for phd programs in the u.s is long it's long like river niger you understand very very long very long so those people there is enough funding for phd students and i know people that are doing from masters they are doing phd myself i'm doing i'm doing uh, from from hnd they are doing phd program me i'm doing master's program and i got funding i also have someone who's close to me that is also going for a master's program with hnd and has got graduate assistantship so what you have to do first of all pick up your cv polish your cv because when you're making those inquiries when you're sending those inquiries to those schools you have to attach your cv don't go and lie inside that cv please don't lie if you if you don't have any experience it's fine but you need to attach your cv to it i also did attach my transcript yeah i had my transcript before making those inquiries i did my transcript in case they wanted to evaluate my transcript and get back to me i added it but one thing that you need to do you need to dust dust your cv prepare your cv and do not just apply to any and any other school you need to be sure you need to make those inquiries you know why it's going to save you money imagine if i had applied to like 10 schools and maybe only two out of those schools accept hnd i have ended up paying application fee to almost giving them free money yes so i was strategic in making those inquiries studying abroad with your hnd you would make inquiries you have to put in the work see before this time i never even had any school business in the us or any other country mm -mm. i did the process myself i did not pay one error to agent because i know that i'm looking for money to eat i'm not gonna be giving agent one money when i can sit down and do everything myself i did not even use the laptop i did now this is where it even gets funny my application to other schools i, th I applied to four schools university of minnesota this is my current school west virginia university kent state university and wright state university yeah up to now i've not heard from wright state university i don't even know the university exists, but i just know that i wasted 45 dollars to pay for that that money is still paying me up to now because i felt like how i just wasted it because i wasn't having the proper information i was just doing everything myself i used my phone yeah my application process was done strictly with my phone i made inquiries with my phone when i got my transcripts i used my iphone to scan all the transcript documents if you don't have an iphone you can easily go to a cafe they will scan your documents for you put it in a pdf format and that was it so i scanned and saved my 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 documents in my phone so i was just using my phone when, when it's time to upload i just click and upload the only thing i did not scan with my phone was my project it was too much yeah so i sent it to someone 
um, at National Open University that works at one of the business centers. So he scanned and converted everything to PDF for me. But you can actually use your phone to apply. It's not only to do Twitter, do whatever. Your phone can actually be like an application pro, um, what is it called? device for you. I use my phone all through all through that was what i used to apply so the first thing dust your cv you need to narrow down searches you need to before you, you for instance now another tool i used in narrowing down the search of my the search was that i looked at for schools that had that were offering my course sport administration sport management at graduate level so once i go to the school master's programs um, page i look for sport administration so after looking for your course, the next thing I looked out for was the English language proficiency. If I, yeah, you have to look out for that because if you don't, if you're, if Nigeria is not among the list, it means you'd have to write English language tests. But I did not write because I did not want to. So you look out for also the English language test requirements. Then. You now know so if you're able to get a school that waves that waves language requirement with GRE, uh, GRE and uh, what else again and offers your course then you cannot go ahead to send out the inquiry email you have to know these things they are very very important pick up your phone pick up your laptop search you narrow down your search you have to be sure of the course you want to even go for in the first place yes there needs to be a correlation. You have to be sure of what you're going for in the first place. So that was how I did my process. And trust me, I got the funding. Yeah. Yeah, even though I have deficits, but I have something that is covering for my food tuition. So I don't have to break my head about food tuition and the rest. And you too can do it. Trust me, you can do it. All you have to do is put in the work. Don't go and give any agent money. Please. Please, because when you get the admission, before you go for your visa interview, you have to pay service fee. That's about $350. So save all the money that you can save in this life. Limit your search. Yeah. So in the next video, I will be sharing a list of schools. I'm still trying to put the list of schools together. I need to be sure. I'll be sharing a list of schools that accept HNE that I know of. Yeah, I'll still try to do more digging into getting more schools. I already have a list, but I would put in more schools in there. And um, another thing I need to say is that it worked for me, it doesn't mean it will work for you. There is always the importance of writing GRE. But if you are able to get a school that with GRE, good and fine for you. Yes, do not line your CV, put that CV together, get your transcript. Very important. Your transcript, you need to get your transcript into a pdf format so when you're sending out emails of inquiries to the program coordinators the international admissions department or graduate admissions department you would attach those things for them to know that yes this person has this this person has this to avoid them making decisions based on assumptions at the end of the day i hope you've enjoyed yeah our first video and going forward um as someone who studied hnd who have hnd i just studied hnd that's like, as someone who has hnd at on the graduate level uh, my channel is going to be strictly about hnd conversations how to get more people with hnd to come study in the us because it's all about experience at the end of the day. I don't have an experience. I'm, I don't have a BSc at my undergraduate level. I only have an HND. So I would keep up with information that can help people with HND move to the US to study and get funding. Trust me, there is funding in the US. I will not lie to you. There is funding. That's why they call it graduate assistantship, like myself. Uh, I'm not a graduate research assistant. My, I'm not doing research. What I do is graduate. I'm a graduate teaching assistant, but I don't teach. What I do is I grade the undergraduate students, grade their their assignments for the for my supervisor who takes the course. So I'm not teaching, but I'm a graduate teaching assistant, and it comes with a lot of benefits. Yeah, you can even it will also boost your CV and the rest. You learn more things about undergrad yeah so it's it's really been fun 
is really being formed. See, there is funding in the US. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And you can get those funding even with your HND, just like myself. I'm a witness to it. I've been there, I've done it. I didn't pay any agent. I did everything myself and you can do it yourself. I will be here to be your guide. I'll tell you what and what you need to do. But for now, I hope you enjoyed my channel, my first video. Please, please and please do not forget do not forget to click the subscribe button. Do not forget to leave your comment. If you have any question, I would answer your question. Do not forget to share because we are in this together. Everyone with an HND is on this table. So do not forget to share because HND and BSC, they are the same thing. Forget about the discrimination. Yes, forget about it. You can do it. Remember, Sarafina and Napoleon secured, yeah secured masters for me with our HND. If I can do it, you can do it. It's all about the work. So are you ready to do it? See you in the next episode of Studying America. Bye.